We begin the Gemara today on the Afpei Tesam with Beis, two lines from the bottom of the Yamud. This is the middle of a Braise discussing the kinds of uh, measuring cups that you use in order that uh, it should be used honestly and uh, fairly, not too small, not too large, and to have it uh, done right. So the Braise continues here and says, Aval oisuhu sa'a, when you uh, make the measuring cups, you make the size of a sa'a, a tarkev, the size of a tarkev, a tarkev is three kav, which is a half a saw. Every saw is six kav. So this tarkiv is a uh, half a kav. Uh, a, again, this tarkiv is um, a half a saw, that is. The chatsi tarkiv, then a size of a half a tarkiv, which is a uh, chatsi tarkiv is going to be three. Um, chatsi tarkiv is going to be. If tarkiv is three, is three, is three, is three kav, so then chatsi tarkiv is going to be a kav and a half. Very good. And then the kav, another measuring size is a kav, and then the chatsi kav, a half a kav, the roiva, a quarter of a kav, the toimen, and an eighth of a kav, the chatsi toimen, and half of that, which is going to be a sixteenth of a kav, and the uchla, and the size of an uchla, which the Gemara is going to explain right now. The Shabbat goes through over here these, these details, also explaining what these are in the egg size, the size of uh, how, how many bayim there is in this. But that over here in the simple pshat of the Braise, this is all shiurim that uh, includes different sizes of measurements in relation to a kav. Now the uchla, the last size that it said here in the Braise, v'kamehi uchla, how much is that? Echad mechamisha b'riviya. It's a fifth of a quarter of a kav. So this last size of a fifth of a quarter of a kav, the riviya, was one of the sizes mentioned before, the roiva. And then after that it said toimen, chatzi toimen, and then uchla. The Rajbamir explains that the difference between the Chatsi Taimen and the Uchla is very little. The difference between them is the Chatsi Taimen is the size of an egg and a half egg, egg and a half. The size of a Uchla is the size of an egg and a fifth of an egg. It's a very <coughs> small difference between them. Okay, well, this will be, rele- it'll be relevant for what the Gemara is going to say soon. Okay, now the Braista continues and says, when it comes to liquid measurements, so what kind of uh, measure, measurements should you uh, use in measuring cups? So huaysa, you make hin, the size of a hin. A hin is 12 lug. And v'chatsi hin, the size of a half a hin. Shlishis hin, a third of a hin, a revius hin, a quarter of a hin. And v'loig, the size of a loig. Chatsi loig, a half a loig, a revius, a quarter of a log. Shminis, an eighth of a log. And v'echad, mishmaina b'shminis. And an eighth of an eighth of a log, which is a 64th of a log, a very, very, very small size. And Vizeo Kartiv. This is the amount that's called a Kartiv in the Mishnah at different times when it speaks about the Mishnah, for example, speaks about when something fell into the mikvah, a little amount, and it uses the term Kartiv. What's this little amount of a Kartiv? It's a eighth of an eighth of a loik. Okay, these are the Shiyurim that uh, are used to make for measuring things when you buy and when you sell. Okay, so now why is it that it says only these Shiyurim that you should use as measuring cups? And not any other shiurim here. So the Gemara here is going to ask on this. Why don't you also have a measuring cup, Nami, Kabayim, a size of two kav? It mentioned before that you have a size of three kav, and you have a size of a kav and a half. That's the tarkiv and the, and the chatsi tarkiv. And uh, then you have a half a kav, but not two kav. Why not two kav? And says the Gemara that the, when the Tana here in the Braxa says exactly these measuring cups, you don't want to make measuring cups that have these in-between sizes because then people can come and make a mistake and you can a seller can easily deceive a buyer by giving him a, a size that's an in-between size and you come to exchange one size with another. So also can okay, two kav can be easily exchanged with a tarki which is three kav. That's why we don't make that size. So the Gemara says, this can't be the, right, the reason, because if so, Alma, I see that to inish tilsa, that people will make a mistake when it comes to the difference of one measuring and another, when the difference is only a third. And the difference between three kav and two kav is the, from the full size of three, if you take off a third from that, you're going to get two kav. So we see that you're saying that you don't make a size of two kav only because people can confuse with a, when the difference is only a third, but if that's the case, ihachi kav nami levit. You shouldn't make the measuring size of a kav because the osilach lufi bechatzi tarkev. Because then people will confuse it with a chatzi tarkev. A chatzi tarkev is a kav and a half. 
So the difference between a kav and a half and a kav is also only the difference of adding another third here. So it's the same thing that people will come to confuse with a third. So Ella, the Gemara says there must be a different reason to another way how to explain why we don't uh, make a size of two kav. Ella kabayim, hainet time the of it. The reason why we don't make the measuring cup in the size of two kav. The Asi Lechlufi Bechatsi Tarkiv, because that could come to be confused with a uh, Kav and a half. The difference between a Kav and a half and two Kav is less than a third. It's actually the difference is a quarter. If you add another quarter to a Kav and a half, you'll get two Kav. So because the difference between them is a quarter, so that's something that people can confuse easily. But on this as well, the Gemara asks, Alma, I see from this, Toy in river that you're saying that people can confuse these two measurings because there's only a quarter of a difference between them. But if that's the case, let's go to the smallest measuring sizes that it said here in the Braise. And here, the difference between them, as I mentioned before, is very minimal. A half a taimen. Now, the taimen is an eighth of a kav. Half of that is a sixteenth of a kav, which comes out to be the size of an egg and a half. And the uchla, and then the size of the uchla, which comes out to be the size of an egg and a fifth of an egg. Loy lab, you shouldn't make these two measuring cups because the difference between them is tiny. One is an egg and a half, and one is an egg and a fifth. So if you're telling me that a people will confuse any time there's a quarter more, just a quarter of a difference, so then how could we make these these um, two measuring cups that there's such a tiny difference between them? Rav Papa, so Rav Papa says, Midais Ketanais, when it comes to these very small measuring cups of the Chatsi Taimen and the Ochle, even though there's a very small difference between them, Biki Buhu Inchi. This is a size that people do know, do, can't tell the difference between them. When it comes to the larger measuring cups, over there, if there's a difference of a quarter, people won't know the difference. But by these very small measuring cups, people will know the difference between them. The Gemara does not explain why that is. But uh, what I saw was that it's possible that the reason is because these tiny sizes, these smaller sizes, are not what's used only when you buy and sell, when you measure things. This is, it's, it's what's used when people drink from it. So people are more just like in these smaller cups like this, or even smaller than this actually, that people drink from. People are more accustomed to using those sizes of measurements uh, when they eat and drink on a daily basis. So this is uh, the difference between them, even if it's very minimal, is something that a person is more accustomed to and will know the difference. But the larger sizes of measuring cups that are only used when you buy and sell, over there, if the difference between one size and another is only a quarter, people won't. Uh, people can get confused in that difference. Okay, but the Gemara still asks, like the Gemara, the difference between the, a third of a hin or a quarter of a hin, lay lavit. So these two measuring sizes, this is going uh, to the liquid uh, measuring sizes. So the third of a hin and a quarter of a hin, you shouldn't make both of these measurings because this could be confused as well. The difference between them is also small enough that people can make a mistake. That says the Gemara, Kivin, the Havu bin Mikdash, since the size of a third of a hin and the size of a quarter of a hin were used in the Beis Mikdash. This was used for the Nesachim, for the wine that they poured in the Mizbeach. So for certain Karbanis, you have to have a Shlish Sehin, and other Karbanis, you have to have a Revi'a Sehin. So because it's used in the Beis Mikdash, Le'gazer Bu'ur Abbanon. The Rabbanon did not decree that it should not be used. Once it's used in the Beis Mikdash, so then they allowed it to be used even in, in, in sales and so on. Chachamim should decree that even in the Beis Mikdash, when they measure the wine for the Nesachim, it should not be used either. So Taisus explains over here, even though this is the shear that they need for the Nesachim, how could Chachamim make a gzeda not to use these measuring sizes? So the answer is that they'll have to use smaller measuring cups to get to that size of Shlisha Sehin or Revi'a Sehin. But maybe there should be gzeda not to have these two measuring cups that are very similar in size. And says the Gemara, in the Beis HaMikdash, there's no reason to be gzeda. And the reason is, Kayanim Zrizen Hain. The Kayanim are very diligent in what they do in their Aveda. They're very careful and they know exactly, precisely what they're doing. And there's no reason to be geyser that they're going to confuse the amount of wine of the Shlisha Sehin and the Revia Sehin. So in the Beis HaMikdash, they weren't geyser. Since they weren't geyser in the Beis HaMikdash, they weren't geyser Bechlal regarding using these measuring cups. Omar Shmuel, Shmuel said, Ein Maisifin ala Midais, if you want to add to the size of these measuring cups. So, but if so, in, in, a, in whatever city it is, they decide that they want to change the sizes of the measuring cups to add to it. it should be bigger sizes used. You're not allowed to add more than a size of a sixth 
of what it was originally. <laughs> and also, if there's a size of a coin, in those times the coins, everything was by the actual value of the metal that it was, and you want to add to the size of the coin, you're not allowed to add to its size more than a sixth of what it was. And the Bahamas Taker, one that is uh, making profit of what he sells, we're talking about a person that buys wholesale, and then he sells retail and he makes profit, he shouldn't sell and uh, make a profit more than a sixth of the value of what he uh, bought it for. Now, Rashbam here adds that this, this idea that you shouldn't sell for a profit more than a sixth doesn't always apply. If there's a certain set market price, uh, so then a person shouldn't uh, make a profit more than a sixth of what he bought it for wholesale. But what's if the market price just went up? And now he can sell it for double the price and he can make a profit much more than uh, a sixth. Not, he's not going to be overcharging anybody. That's, that's now the market price that it's double of what he bought it for, or even more. Then it's not a problem. You could uh, make a profit much more. Okay, so now the Gemara explains what it says here. What Shmuel said, that when you add to the measuring sizes, don't add more than a sixth to its size. This that we said, you don't add to the sizes more than a sixth of what it was. My time, what's the reason for this? Why Dafka up to a sixth, but not uh, more than this? If you're going to say that what we're concerned is, that once you start add, adding to the size of the measuring cups that are used, so then it's easy for sellers to start hiking the price. They say, look, I'm giving you a bigger size, and they just hike the price, and even if they hike the price higher and more than the little that they added, but once they add, they're able to easily add uh, more to the price. If so, so you shouldn't allow to change the, the, the size of the measuring cups, not just uh, more than a six, but even changing the size of six could also be a problem. It'll also be an excuse to hike the price. So, hello, says the Gemara, there must be a different reason. We sure may know. The reason is that it shouldn't come to be a level where you're deceiving someone. And the halacha is that when you deceive someone, a, a, a sixth or less than a sixth, then the sale is still in effect. If you deceive someone up to, to, to the amount of less than a sixth, so then the, the sale is still in effect. It's a mechila, a meichel. If you deceive someone the amount of a sixth, then you're overcharging an amount of a sixth, so then the sale is still in effect and the seller just has to return the extra money that he charged. When you deceive someone more than a six, then the whole sale becomes null and void. So over here, they didn't want that you should change the size of the measuring cups more than a six, so that it shouldn't then come to be that the whole sale is going to be null and void. Because if you deceive them in the, in the measuring size, that it was, it was, uh, you, you change it more than a six, then, then the, uh, the seller is going to be deceived more than a six, so then it's going to be bottle. So, okay, so what the Gemara says, if that's what you're concerned about, it also doesn't explain this because it doesn't, over here, these differences in the Shiyurim of how much you deceived doesn't apply in this case because of all my Rav, Rav said, or another gear series, Rabbe, Rabbe said, Kol Dover, anytime you're selling something, should be Midah, has a certain size, should be Mishkal, a certain weight, it should be Minion, a certain number. So over here, this whole shear of a sixth and more than a sixth does not apply. I feel it, Pachis no, even if it's less than the amount that it usually is regarding when you deceive someone, Chayzer, you can retract from the whole sale. What Rabbi is saying is this whole concept of deceiving someone a sixth or more than a sixth is only when it comes to the value of what you charge, the money. Over there, you have these shiurim, when a person is meichel, when a person is not meichel, it's only a little amount of money, more money, less money. But when it comes to the actual amount, whether in size or weight or number, if I tell you I'm selling you a, a, a number of 10 and you only give me 9, so then it's, even if it's a, a deception that's less than a 6, but it's not what you told me you're giving me. Or you tell me you give me one weight and you give me a different weight, it's not what you told me you're giving me. The Rashbam says it's like what we learned before. You tell someone you're selling him something that's white and you give him something that's red. So you're going to say, well, red is not so different than white. It, it doesn't work that way. Well, if you did not give what you said you're going to give in the sale, it's a different object. It's, a, it's not the same number. It's not the same weight. Even if it's a small difference, the sale is null and void. So, so this over here, we can't say that you can't change the size of the measurement more than a six so that it shouldn't be mevatel the sale. Even changing it a tiny drop. And you don't give the buyer exactly the amount, the wholesale is anyways null and void. So Ella, the Gemara says, the, diff, the reason why we're saying not to add to the measuring cups more than the size of the six, there has to be a different reason. The loyal have psayda letagra, so that there shouldn't be any loss to merchants. What does it mean that there shouldn't be loss to a merchant? If a merchant is coming to the city and he's selling, 
and he doesn't realize that the, the measuring cups in this city have been changed. And they added, they added a, a six to it. And he sells with the price that he was selling till now. But really, the cups that they're measuring, the merchandise that he's selling, they're, they're adding a six to it. So in order that he shouldn't, that he shouldn't have a loss, they said you shouldn't add more than a sixth. Okay, what, what does this mean? Because as we said before, when a merchant sells, he sells with a profit margin of a sixth. So if you're gonna add a sixth to the measuring cup, so then he's so up to the amount of a sixth, he's not gonna have any loss because he's anyways charging a premium, he's making a profit of a sixth. So if, if you add a sixth to what he's giving, so then he's not, he's not gonna lose anything. So they, but more than a sixth though, if you add to the measuring cup more than a sixth, so then he's gonna end up actually losing because his whole entire margin of uh, profit was only a sixth. So the Gemara asks on this pshat, we're only concerned that this merchant that's coming into the city and is unaware of the change of the measuring cups, so we're concerned that he shouldn't have a loss in his, in his sales. We're not concerned that he's not going to have a profit at all. This merchant is traveling from city to city with all of his expenses and he's trying to make a profit. And because you make the measuring cups a sixth bigger than it was, it's going to prevent him from making any profit. He may not have a loss, but he's not going to have a profit either. A merchant that buys and then sells for no profit. He has no loss, but he has no profit either. This is a merchant. He can't live like this. So how can you say that this shear is in order that he shouldn't have a loss if at the same time you're not allowing him to have a profit either? This is a famous expression. The Gemara says here regarding a merchant. A merchant that buys and sells with no profit. Is this a merchant? It's brought in Chassidus uh, as an expression used to the neshama that comes out into the world that if the neshama comes into this world and it doesn't gain more than what it was when it, before it came into the world, so this, this, this is a, there's a purpose in this, coming into the world and just making sure that you don't do anything wrong, no avedis, and you just come to the level of where your neshama was above, that, that, that's, that's a gain, that's a, there's no point in this. That, that's where it's brought, to, one of the places it's brought in. Okay, so Ella, the Gemara now concludes and explains what Shmuel said. Ella, Omer, Av Chizde, explains, Shmuel, Kro, Ashkech, Vedarish. Shmuel actually found a Pasik, and based on this Pasik, he taught that when you add to the sizes of measuring cups, you add up to a sixth and not more. What's the Pasik that he found? The Pasik says, Va Shekel, Esrim, Geira. A Shekel is made up of 20 of coins, 20 Geira. And now, what's from this uh, shekel, which is also called a sela, how do you get to the amount of a mone? Esrim shkolim, you have 20 shkolim, chamisha ve esrim shkolim, another 25 shkolim, a sort of a chamisha shekel, another 15 shekel, so the, together this is uh, 60 shkolim, ha mone, yilichem. That's what makes up the amount of a mone. Okay, so now this mone that we're talking about over here, is a mana that's used in Kaidish, as we're going to see soon. But the point over here, that the reason why it says it this way in the Pasik, it doesn't just say that 60 shkolim make up a mana. It says 20, 25, and 15. It's because there are different ways of, of measuring what makes up the amount of a mana. In some places it was 20, in other places it was 25, and in other places it was 15. So here the, the Pasik is saying that the mana in Kaidish is a combination of all of them. When you have 20, 25, and 15, which is 60 shkolim, that is what makes up this money. Okay, now, but the Gemara asks on this. According to this, it comes out that money. What is a money? Masen ve'arben habo. A money is 240 shkolim. That's what it comes out here. Or actually, sorry, 200, 240 dinarim. Okay, now the cheshven over here is every shekel is four dinar. Okay, so if, if you're going to say that 60 shkolim is a money, and every shekel is four dinarim, so 60 divided, uh, no, 60, not divided, sorry, 60 uh, multiplied by four is going to be 240 dinarim for every mana. How, how could that be? We know, the Rashbami brings, that we know the klal always is, that every mana is made up of a hundred dinar, just like uh, a dollar is a hundred pennies, every mana is a is hundred dinar. So how are we coming to this uh, number of saying that a mana is made up of 60 shkalim, which is 240 dinar? Okay, so now, how, so the, the, the Gemara explains how we come to this number, and here we'll see this idea of not adding more than a sixth. Elo shmami no. From here we understand class, three points. First of all, we see from here, shmami no mana shal kodesh kafal haya. 
We're not talking over here about a regular money. We're talking about a money that was used in the base of Mikdash. And over there, that money was double the amount, double the size of what a money usually is. Okay, so if a regular mana is from 100 dinner, so the mana in Kaidesh is 200 dinner. That's the first point. So we have, we come to 200 dinner. Now another point there is a Shmami no, we also understand from here that Mysifin al Amidis, that you can add, you can add to the size of the coin, and you can add a sixth more. And you don't add more than a sixth. So over here, the, the mana in the regular mana is 100 uh, dinner. The mana of Kaidesh is going to be 200. But if you add a six to that, so then the regular money is going to be 120 dinner. And, if you, and then if you're going to add a, a, a six by Kaidish, double that, it's going to be 240. That's how you come to this number of 240 dinner that make up this money of Kaidish. Now, a third point the Gemara says is, Ushmami no, we also see from here, Shtusa Milabar. When we measure this amount of a six, the way to measure the sixth is the sixth of the total amount, which is really a fifth. Meaning that if you divide a hundred into into five, it's going to be twenty. Twenty, uh, 20 uh, dinner is a fifth of uh, of a hundred. Now, when you want to add another twenty coins and make it a hundred and twenty, so then that's a sixth. Meaning that the sixth over here is the sixth of the total amount. If it would be a sixth of um, a sixth, uh, there's, a, there's a sixth milagav, a sixth not from the total amount, but a sixth b- before you add. That, that extra part, so then it would be less than 20. What, what's a sixth of, uh, of 100? It's not, uh, it's not 20, huh? 16 and, 16 and a half or something like that. So over here, when it says that you add a sixth to the size of the coin, we're talking about adding, and it's called a sixth after it's the total amount, which is really a fifth. So the point over here is, from this Pasuk you see that when they add it to the size of the coin, and this was a coin that was used by Kaidesh, the mana, what's, what, how much did they add to the size of the coin? A sixth. So from here, Shmuel learned out that the same is also regarding any measuring cups. When you want to add to the size of the measuring cups, you should add only the amount of a sixth and not more. So he, in his city, he prepared and made, put in use a, a, a measuring cup, which was Barclosa Kapizi, which was the size of three Kapizi. Now, this three Kapizi, the Rajbam says, is the size of nine Lug. That's the amount that he said. Now, if you compare this to what it said in the Braise, the Braise does not talk about using a liquid measuring cup in the size of, three, of nine Lug. But he, he created this new measuring cup in this size. Amrulay, they said to him, why did you do this? But Shmuel said that when you want to create a new measuring cup and you want to add to its size, you shouldn't add more than the size of a sixth. And the Rashbam says what he added over here was more than a sixth. Why? Because in the Braise, it speaks about a measuring cup, which is... A a uh, chatzit tarkev. What's a chatzit tarkev? It's six log. And if you're adding a, a, a measuring cup, which is nine log, nine log to six log is much more than a sixth. So why, why are you uh, making this measuring cup, which is adding to its size more than a sixth? So Rav Papa Bashmol said, I um, made a new measuring cup and Shadre uh, Pumpedisa, they sent it to Pumpedisa. And Veloi Kiblua, and in Pompadisa, they did not accept it. Pompadisa, I believe, was the place where Shmuel was the, the Rosh Hashiva, and over there they did not accept it. And the Shadr Le Papunye, and they sent it to Papunye, Ve Kiblua. Over there they did accept his measuring cup and they did use it. And the Karule, they actually nicknamed it Ruz Papa. This is the measuring cup uh, that uh, Rapop uh, instituted. And they, they did accept it in that city, even though it was more than what was said that you're supposed to add to it, but over there it was accepted. Okay, here the Gemara gives a simon for the next piece over here that discusses different halachas. Simon, Oitzre Peris, Ein Oitzrim, Ve Ein Metzien, Ve Ein Mistakrim, Poamim, Ve Veitzim, Masriim, Ve Loi Okay, we're not going to learn all of these halachas today, but some of them here in the Braises that the Gemara brings. Tana Rabbanon, Oitzre Peris. People that take from the produce and they buy produce uh, off of the market. And what do they do with this produce? They don't, uh, they buy from wholesalers and they don't go and sell it. They go and they, they store it. What do they store it for so that later they can take it out and sell it for, for a high price when people don't have what to eat? 
or omalve beribis, people that are, are lending money with interest, or maktine eifa, people that make the measuring cups smaller than they're supposed to be and they're deceiving the buyers, and people that sell higher than the standard price that they're supposed to sell by, it's regarding these individuals that it says in the Pasik. That Lemar, the Evisha says, Masa Yavar, or Lemar, that is, people say that is. People say, Masa Yavar Achaydish, Venashbira Sheva. When is the time, the month, when people have all their produce, what to eat? When will that time pass, Venashbira Sheva? Then we'll take out the produce to sell. This part of the Pasik is talking about the people that store the produce and they wait until it's later in the season and people don't have enough, and then later they take it out and sell it on a higher price. And also others that say, When will the Shabbos pass? Which is the Shemitah, when seven years will pass, and then we'll open up the storage house and sell. And those that uh, make the size of the Eifa smaller than it's supposed to be, or they charge a higher price, or mirma, and they don't, uh, the, the scales are not uh, honest scales. So these are the people that are deceiving people, are charging a higher price and so on. Oksiv, and later on the Pasuk there says, Nishba Hashem begoin Yaakiv v'meshkach l'netzach kol maseim. The Devisha swears that he's going to remember their actions to punish them. Now the Gemara clarifies, those people that take produce off the market and they store it to sell it later, Oitzrei peides, so the issue of doing this, kagoin mai, who is this like? Omer Rabbi Yechenin, kagoin shapse oitzrei peides. It's like the individual by the name of Shapsi that he did this, that he would store fruits and he wouldn't sell. Now, the Gemara is bringing this as an example because I want you to understand that the issue over here is only when you're storing and then when you sell it later, you're selling it on a higher price. And therefore, you're, you're causing people to have to pay more. But if a person is storing these paytas and then he sells it later in the season for the regular cheaper price that it's supposed to be. So even though he stored it, but if he's not hiking the price, then it's not a problem. Now, the Gemara brings Avu the Shmuel Shmuel's father, Mazbun Lahulapede, Betara Kharfe, Katara Kharfe. He sold his, the, the produce in, when right at the beginning of the season, when the price is low. And he would sell then on a low price. And so he would do this so that the price should be established as a low price. And once there was a low price, because there was a lot of fruits available in the beginning of the season, this became the going rate and the price for the rest of the season. Shmuel Bere, Shmuel, the son of, of uh, his son. Mashi Lepedi, he would keep uh, the, the produce, he would store it. He would sell it later in the season, when usually the price goes up, because there's less available. He would keep it until then, but he would sell it then for a lower price, to make it available for people for a lower price. Now, Sholchum Mitam, they sent from Eretz Yisrael. To, to say about what uh, the father Shmuel was doing and about what Shmuel himself was doing, what the father is doing is better than what the son is doing. My time, what's the reason for this? Because what the father Shmuel did, once he caused in the beginning of the season that there should be a cheaper price because there was a lot of produce available, so that cheaper price remained throughout the entire season. But Shmuel, though, himself, he only brought, a, a, for people, a cheaper price later in the season, when the price would go up. But he didn't necessarily cause that the entire season there should be a cheaper price. So therefore, what the father of Shmuel did was better. Omar Rav, Rav said, A person may take from his own produce that grew in his own field, in his own farm, and he can store it and sell it uh, later on in the season. Meaning what he's explaining is, this that it said before, that you shouldn't store and then only sell it later for a higher price. That's only if you're buying off of the market and you're buying out from the market and you're keeping it and, and then selling it for a higher price. But from your own field, from your own farm, that you're allowed to put in the storehouse and sell later. Tanya Namiyachi, we learned this in Abraisa as well. Ein oitzrem peris, you're not allowed to store fruits, and this is dvarim sheyesh bem chaye nefesh. This refers to things that people need for basic living. Kogon yeyna is shmanem, wine, oil, salta is flour. Avol, however, tavlin, kamoin, or pilpulin, different kinds of spices, and black pepper and so on, or kamoin is what, ginger? Cumin. Cumin, cumin, okay. Then uh, this, mutter. Those things that are not for basic needs, that you are allowed to store. Now, this Bamed uh, though, when is this that we say that uh, you're not allowed to store things that are the basic needs that people need? If you're buying it off the market and you, then you're going and storing it. If a person has his own produce that he grew in his own farm, then that a person is allowed to store. 
And that it's Yisrael, and that it's Yisrael, a person is, is, there is a time when you are allowed to store fruits and keep them for later. And when is this? When you come to the years around Shemitah. Gimel Shanim, the three years of Erev Shviyas, the year before Shemitah, or Shviyas, and then for the year of Shemitah, or Matzah Shviyas, and for the year after Shemitah, because if, since you're not going to be planting then, so you want to store fruits for that time period to have, to have what to eat for yourself and for people to sell then in the, for these three years. But when it's a, a famine or a year of hunger, then I feel a kav charuv in yetzer. Even just a small amount of carob you should not store. Because then, because it's much less available, then you the, the prices will go up if you're storing things. Rabbi Barchanin said to Fuga, which was his uh, servant, Puk, go out, utterly peri, shalishonim, and uh, store for me fruits, the produce, for three years, which were Erev Shviyas, the year before Shemitah, and Shviyas, the year of Shemitah, Umatzah Shviyas, and the eighth year, the year after Shemitah, when you don't, don't have yet the produce for the new year until later on in the eighth year, so store for me for those three years, and that's allowed. The Rosh Pamir says that this must be that Rabbi Yisrael Barchanini, even though he lived after the Chorban and there was no Shemitah, at that time, but his opinion actually is that there is Shemitah because the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael remains. This is what the Rashbam says. From the Rashbam, it seems that his opinion is that only, a, only if you say that the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael remains is there a Shemitah and a Taira. But otherwise, there's no Mitzvah of Shemitah. But most Rishayim hold that even if there's no Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael today, the way it was in the time of the Beis Mikdash, there still is the Mitzvah of Shemitah and the Rabbanon in Eretz Yisrael today. Okay, one more piece. Let's learn today. Ton Rabbanon. We learned Nabraise. Ei Maitzien Peres Meretz Yisrael. You're not allowed to export fruits or produce from Eretz Yisrael. And this is Dvarim Sheyesh Bem Chayin Nefesh. Things that are needed for for basic living. Kagan Yeno Is Shmana Masaltes Wine Oil Or Flour. Rabbi Yudah Ben Meseide Mater Beyayin. Rabbi Yudah Ben Meseide says you could export wine from Eretz Yisrael. There's a lot, a lot of wine today that we get uh, from Eretz Yisrael. The reason is because wine, drinking, having too much wine available in Eretz Yisrael will bring people to uh, to, to become shikir, to, to just talk, not do nonsense. So it's a good a good idea to export uh, some of the wine. Just like you're not allowed to export these things of basic needs from Eretz Yisrael outside, you also shouldn't be exporting from Eretz Yisrael to Surya. Now, Surya was an area that Dovar HaMelech conquered, and it had some halachas like Eretz Yisrael, but it's still called Kibush Yochid, that he conquered it as an uh, individual, but it wasn't annexed, it wasn't part of Eretz Yisrael. So you're not allowed to export even from Eretz Yisrael to this area in Surya. Rabbi says that you are allowed to export from an area that's right on the border of Eretz Yisrael to Surya, to another area that's right at the beginning of this area of Surya, right near Eretz Yisrael, you are allowed to export from one area to another. That's Rosh Bam's Prat. There are other Rishonim, though, that say that Mehefrachya Lehefrachya here is talking about from one area in Eretz Yisrael to another. That according to the Tanakhama, there's maybe another Girs here in the Braise, according to the Tanakhama, you shouldn't even be exporting like you're taking from the north of Eretz Yisrael to the south from one area to another, so there should be available in each area what they need. That's what the Tanakhama is saying. And then on that, Rebbe says that within Eretz Yisrael, you are allowed to export and bring from one area to another.